Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and call to order the 1,590th regular meeting of the Thornton City Council. Before we begin, just like to remind everyone in the audience to please turn off or silence all electronic devices. Also, if there's anyone in the audience who has a need to get assistance in listening to and or participating in the meeting and has not indicated so on the sign-up sheet, you can raise your hand and a staff member will provide assistance. All right, item two is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item three is a moment of silence. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Item four is a roll call of the council. Clerk, would you please call the roll of council? Mayor Coleman? Here. Councilmember Pinto? Here. Councilmember Ayala? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Bigelow? Here. Councilmember Henson? Councilmember Martinez? Here. Councilmember Russell? Here. Councilmember Sangren? Councilmember Unrain? Here. Quorum is present, Your Honor. Thank you. Item five is approval of the agenda. Are there any staff changes to the agenda this evening? No, Your Honor. Council, any changes to the agenda? All right. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Thank you. Approval of the agenda has, as presented has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? If not, clerk, please pull the council. Council, please cast your votes. Motion passed unanimously, Your Honor. Thank you. Item 6 is presentations. Item 6A is a resolution conveying the City Council's gratitude and appreciation to Eduardo Moreno on his retirement from the city. Mayor Pro Tem Bigelow, would you please introduce this item and read it in its entirety? Thank you. I'd like to introduce a resolution conveying the City Council's gratitude and appreciation to Eduardo Moreno on his retirement from the city. Whereas Eduardo Moreno has served the city as a regular full-time employee for 23 years in a professional and loyal manner, and whereas Eduardo began employment on April 12, 1999 as a contract project manager and changed to a regular full-time project manager on January 1, 2001. And whereas Eduardo received multiple Team Distinguished Service Awards and Team of the Year Awards over the many years of service to include, but not limited to, the United We Stand Team, Drought Team, Columbine Water Treatment Plant Expansion Team, Corridor Team, and the Recreation Center Pond Project Team. And whereas Eduardo received an Individual Distinguished Service Award in 2014 for his involvement in the repairs following the September 2013 floods, and whereas Eduardo received Team of the Year in 2018 for his response and coordination of the Lambertson Lakes Sewer Collapse Team, and whereas Eduardo received Team of the Year in 2022 for his hard work and diligence on the Thornton Water Project right-of-way acquisition team, and whereas Eduardo has approached his job in a professional, skillful, and dedicated manner and with a strong commitment to serve the community. And whereas the council wishes to recognize Eduardo for the contributions he has made over the years of city to over the years of service to our city. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council, by the city of Thornton, Colorado, as follows that the City Council hereby recognizes the commitment, dedication, and loyalty of Eduardo Moreno and conveys its earnest appreciation and thanks for the many contributions he has made during his 23 years as an employee of the city. And I would ask for its immediate approval. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution. Is there any discussion? I'm going to save my comments for the presentation. Uh, would you please poll the Council? Council, please cast your votes. Motion passed unanimously, Your Honor. Thank you. And at this time, I would like to ask Eduardo and his family, along with Brett Henry, to join me in front of the dais.
Eduardo, congratulations to you on your retirement. While it's hard to say goodbye, you have truly earned your ticket into retirement. And during your 25 years in the city of Thornton, you've managed countless projects with enthusiasm and an incredibly strong work ethic. The ownership and responsibility that you embrace on your projects never goes unnoticed. Over your tenure, you have built lasting projects that will benefit our community for generations to come, and your drive to develop meaningful relationships means you will be missed. It is with absolute appreciation and gratitude that we wish you the best in retirement. Thank you for being part of the city, a teammate, a friend, and someone who will be both missed and remembered. Brett, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Mayor. You know, Eduardo, you were on the interview panel when I came in in 2007, and from that moment when I met you during that panel, um, just the way you, you were so willing to support me and, and reach out and help me, especially as I came in as a project manager as well with the city, um, I always felt welcome talking to you about their, the projects all throughout that time. Um, I also wanted to note, and uh, Mayor Pro Tem Bigelow read the resolution, but um, Eduardo's been involved on pretty much every significant uh, piece of infrastructure project that we've had within the city as it relates to the water utility. Uh, most recently, he was he was managing the hundred million dollar Thornton water treatment plant replacement that we just performed over here, and then uh, finally working on the Thornton water project. So it speaks a lot the fact that um, every significant piece of our infrastructure you've been involved in, and really to your commitment to the city, and of course your professionalism that you bring. So I can't thank you enough. I'm really sad to see you go, but a huge congratulations, Eduardo. <laughs> Would you like to say anything? I'm not good at speaking, but um, I just want to thank City Council, uh, Brett, and City staff, all the all the good friends that I have in the city for uh, the support that they provided to me during the years. Uh, John is, is is a good mentor, is a good friend, and and uh, I enjoy working with the city. It's been um, a great experience for me, for my family. Uh, I'm proud to be a city employee, and you know I'm available. Uh, if if the city needs my help, uh, you know I'm willing to willing to help if if I can't. So I, I wish the city a good luck, uh, great stuff, great friends, uh, and thank you. On behalf of the City Council, we would like to present you with this token of our appreciation. Thank you so much for everything you've done. And Council, would you join me up here for a picture? Thank you, and congratulations again, Eduardo. We'll move on to item seven, which is audience participation. This is a time for members of the community to speak on any item that is not on the agenda as a public hearing or going to be on a public hearing in the future. Pursuant to City Council's rules of order and procedure, speaking time is limited to three minutes per person with a one hour limit on this segment of the agenda. Ms. Rosenbaum, is there anyone who signed up to speak under audience participation? Yes, Your Honor, we have five individuals that signed up in person. No one has signed up online. All right. Uh, in just a moment, you will be, uh, speaker, you will be asked to join us at the podium. Uh, each speaker will be given up to three minutes to speak, and the segment of the agenda is, again, limited to one hour. Please make sure that you watch the light on the podium. When it turns yellow and you hear a single beep, you'll need to wrap up your comments. And when it turns red, you'll hear multiple beeps, and your time is up, and I'll have to interrupt you as your three minutes will be over. When you are called, those in person, please come to the podium. 
and uh, we're going to skip the ones that are online, and we will go ahead and call the first person. Mile High Mechanics and Brawling Bananas. Uh, all right, do you start? Go ahead. All right. Hello, we're three, team 32092 G, the Mile High Mechanics from Stargate High School. And team 32092 E, the Brawling Bananas, also from Stargate High School. And we recently competed at the VEX Robotics World Championship in Dallas, Texas. We competed against 820 teams from over um, 45 different countries in a soccer like game played by robots that we designed and built. Teams compete to score the highest, um, the highest score, either cooperating in 2v2 matches or on their own. And they also compete to document the engineering design process in a professional engineering notebook. While there, we placed 47th in the world and were finalists for judged awards. Your funding allowed us to go there and represent the city of Thornton on a global stage and bring awareness to local robotics programs. We were testing on our STEM skills there, including teamwork, project management, communication, and problem solving. Uh, thank you for your time. and. And thank you for supporting STEM education in Thornton. Uh, yeah, and then we uh, at the Brawling Bananas just also wanted to say the same thing. Thank you so much for all of your support uh, financially and just uh, as a community. And I mean, it's meant so much to us, as you can see up on the presentation. There we are at the World Championship, where, as you said, we got to compete against over 800 teams. And I mean, that was really just a wonderful experience for us to uh, grow the STEM program, not just at Stargate, uh, not just within us, but within our community. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Bigelow. I just wanted to say thank you for coming and reporting back to us. And we're so thrilled to support you. We love seeing what you're doing out in the world. And we look forward to seeing what you do in the future. Thank you. Yeah. Council Member Ayala. Um, I've been to so many council meetings over the years, and I just want to give you guys a shout out for uh, upping your banana merch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for coming back and sharing your progress with us. It's always great when we get to support our students, but when they show us what they use with that support we give them, it's even better for us. So thank you very much for coming here tonight. Yeah, thank you, guys. Would you please call the next person? Mary Payne, Ward 3. Good evening. Everybody, Thornton Fest is this Saturday. Came up really fast, didn't it? Fire Museum tent will be open. Come by and see us. We're excited to have looked at the drawings that have been presented. The final result is very customer friendly. So we're really looking forward to that. June 10th is a faith-based alliance group meeting, 11.30. You can make reservations with Maricela at Community Connections, 720-977-5813. And she's here tonight. Um, but come and get involved in your city. Comments are made that there's no community involvement. Excuse me? <laughs> John Algy, Jackie Phillips, Tom, Sandy Wolf. I, I can't name them all because we're all involved in some form or way or other. So if you're sitting there saying there's no involvement, shame on you. Thank you. Would you please call the next person? Sandra Wolf, Ward 1. Good evening. I'd like to start out by giving a shout out to the Development Code Update Community Open House on May 21st. I attended and I, I really enjoyed it. So thank you for doing that. Now, this is my favorite topic and every year about this time I talk about it. It's a thing called tornadoes. I've said it before and I'll say it again and continuously until someone listens and does something. 
We've all heard and watched the news lately, right? And saw the devastation of the weather, the deadly weather, especially tornadoes in many states, including our own. A news reporter asked the victim if they had tornado warnings, and they replied, no siren, only warning apps, which not everybody receives. Well, I find that amazing. I did a little research, just a little, and I found out that Kingsburg, a population of 2,000 in Colorado, has a warning siren. Yuma has a population of 3,500, and they have three warning signs, uh, warning sirens. Commerce City has 13. Brighton has 20. Denver has, of course, 86, uh, which 11 are at DIA. And Thornton, we have a big fat goose egg, none, as well as Westminster, North Glen, Federal Heights, and unincorporated Adams County. It's been said that they're expensive and they're seldom used. Well, what about the fact that it could save a life? I've been told that we have code red. Well, code red doesn't fit for all, and the app doesn't work well from my experience anyway, and I've been told by several that it sucks. Remember the impact and damage of 1981 in Thornton? I do, and I still suffer from PTSD. Every time I hear the word tornado, I, I get anxiety. We had 47 that were injured, seven severely. Thank God no one was, was reported as a death. 87 homes totally destroyed, 11, uh, 110 homes were damaged, and 600 substantial damage. So our city leaders need to have another, ex oh, so do we need to have another experience like that? I've had a conversation with Mr. Doyle from the fire department and, and Justin Martinez, and uh, I hope that I don't have to come back and say I told you so. My expectation is to have more than excuses of why not. Thank you. Thank you. Would you please call the next person? Jackie Phillips, Ward 1. Hello, Thornton City Council. I'm Dr. Jackie Phillips. And I, first, I want to start off by saying thank you. Thank you for all the work that you do. And when we come and speak, and we do bring problems to you, but that doesn't mean that we don't think you're doing a good job. We really appreciate what you do. Like, nobody knows better than, than I do what it's like to have to field a lot of concerns and complaints from citizens. And Justin Martinez, big shout out to you. I know we drive you crazy, but it's because you respond. <laughs> So I've been knocking a lot of doors in um, House District 31 as I'm a candidate. That's Ward 1, Ward 2, and Ward 3. And what I wanted to share tonight was some of the issues that, that voters were talking to me about at the doors that weren't necessarily related to legislative work in my campaign for State House, but that were more local. And so um, I'll start with Ward 3. Oh, yeah, my mom's here tonight. I forgot to say that. So everyone be nice to her, please. Akunta. No, you guys could... Be nice to each other. Anyway, um, so Ward 3, and I know, Councilmember Unrun, you're, you know, you're very well known up there for um, you know, your responsiveness. And so the neighbors, two things from up there. One of them was there's an easement on 128th between Eudora and Fairfax, and it needs to be maintained. So the neighbors there were concerned that it doesn't get maintained. It's not maintained regularly, trees, grass, et cetera. Also in Ward 3, there's no doggy poop bags in some of the parks, and so that was a concern that they shared. Um, for Ward 1, you know, there's a rumor down there that there's going to be that building on Milky Way and Pecos is going to be for sex offenders. And so I think it would just be good to have some communication so that that, you know, rumor doesn't spread. Um, also, the neighbors on Milky Way were really wondering what's happening with the road there because there's big equipment there. I think the neighbors just need to know ahead of time, like, are they repaving or is it, you know, are they going to close the road or something like that? But the biggest concern um, comes from business. This is a business concern, and I know we're super pro-business and especially pro-small business in the city of Thornton because that's our revenue, right? You guys, the homeless problem. I am not talking about homeless that HOT handles, the homeless outreach team. We're not talking about people that need, you know, they have a job and, that, you know, they can't find affordable housing and they're using vouchers, you know, that HOT offers. We are talking about on 84th Avenue and those small business, people that show up with 17 shopping carts on, a, on small business property. That's commercial property. 
You guys, that is private property. And that has been allowed to happen over and over. And it's a lot of finger pointing. Oh, police can't do it. Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's code. Meanwhile, those small businesses are now having to clean up those 17 shopping carts over and over and over again. I know they're extremely frustrated. I know Justin, there a lot. There's a lot of pictures going to today, and a lot of people were reaching out. So um, yeah, that's it. That's all I have. Again, just communicating issues that are coming from House District 31 that I think are relevant to Thornton City Council. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would you please call the next person? Tom Molander, Ward One. Oh. Hello, City Council. I don't know how to begin this, but it's already starting. Fireworks. And I, you know, if it was the 4th of July, I wouldn't give a darn about them. Blow all you want up. I don't care. It's the 4th of July. I know they're illegal, but I think you understand what I'm saying. But in May, that's a little bit early. And I've already talked to somebody. I know what I need to do. But it's just like, I'm wanting the city council maybe, I don't know what you guys can do, if there's anything you can do. I'm sure my neighbor's dog would appreciate it. It was huddled deep in its owner's arms and um, crying. And it's an LGD dog. And for any of you that know what an LGD dog is, it's a big dog and they're mean. And it was crying over the fireworks. I mean, you, you want to be happy and shoot them off? Do it on the 4th and only then and do it for, you know, an hour or so. You know, or let the city do it. I'm sure you're going to have a fireworks display again. You guys always do. But I just, I don't know what the heck to do. I really don't. I mean, I can, because I could report the guy, because I see him do it. I see him light him off. I could video it. I don't know if that would help, and you guys can do something off of a video. But it's just like, you know, they're neighbors too, and I really don't want to start, you know, snitching on the neighbors. But you know what? To help something not go berserk, I may start doing that. I just don't know yet. And thank you for listening. I just wanted to take a few minutes of your time. And uh, y'all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. I believe that was the last person to sign up. Yes, Your Honor. If there's anyone in the audience that wanted to speak that didn't know you needed to sign up, you can come to the podium now. John, I know you know you have to sign up. Uh, all right, good evening, Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor Pro Tem, members of council and staff. So I was planning on speaking tonight, but I thought, yeah, I probably should. Why not? It's been a while since I've been in person. I do watch the planning sessions and the meetings on Zoom every week, but um, there's nothing like being, you know, direct human interaction. So I thought tonight was a good night, Zane, to, to be here. And then uh, I do promise this body I will be in a little bit better dressed in two weeks' time, because I hear there's a recognition that's going to take place, and I think I might be part of that. So um, I'm looking forward to that, and I thank the city uh, as well. And I want to congratulate um, everybody as well for city council and staff for the successful resolution um, that the Larimer County Board of Commissioners, by unanimous decision, approved our water project for the final 11 miles of pipeline so we can get growth going again here in the city of Thornton. Um, I will say I do hope that growth is in a sustainable nature, um, not just because, just just for the sake of it. That's the thing that we really need to, moving forward, what we need to do as a city and, and involve the residents. And I'm very happy to see the city interact with the residents and getting, their, getting our feedback, you know, especially with the Thornton Shopping Center and other things. I'm very happy about that. Um, so just keep up the good work. And... Um, so in closing, Madam Mayor, I want to thank you specifically for the very kind words that you that we talked about last month at the Thornton Chamber event at uh, Molly Brown Spirits. Uh, that meant a lot to me, and I do thank you for that. And um, my family situation is way better than it was at the first of the year. So um, both moms are doing well. 
and uh, and also my stepson had a um, health issue, which has been success with a successful resolution in California. So uh, once again, I thank all of you for your great work. Oh, man, Mayor Pro Tem, congrats to David as well on the American Legion thing. Didn't get a chance to text that today. So, all right, I will let the council do its business. Thank you all for your work and have a good night. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we will move on to item eight, which is council comments and communications. I'm going to mix it up tonight. We're going to start with council member Unrein. Thank you. Uh, start with uh, yesterday at Olinger Cemetery with the uh, veterans of foreign wars and the American Legion. They hosted the annual Memorial Day remembrance service in honor of those that have given the ultimate sacrifice. This service was uh, the service gave tribute to our fallen veterans our fallen veterans and service members, which included presentations by the Thornton Police and Fire Honor Guard, Colorado Emerald Society Pipes and Drums, and the Colorado Air National Guard with a flyover. A special presentation of an American Eagle followed the service. It was my honor, and I enjoyed with uh, Mayor Coleman and uh, Councilman uh, Martinez, and it was our, our honor to attend this annual event. Next, on, in Ward 3, uh, development and construction activities are well in progress. We have and will continue to experience detours and road closures. So I ask everybody to pay attention to the road warning and speed displays, the flag sign operators, the construction workers and their equipment. From to, starting today, uh, May 28th through August 5th, 136th Avenue will be closed between Quebec and Syracuse Street. Thank you for working through these inconven the inconveniences and making safety our number one priority. Um, Jackie Phillips, thank you very much for that information. I'll probably follow up with you on that exact location where we need to take care of the easement. Uh, Doug, poop bags are our priority. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Council Member Acunto. Uh, thank you, Tony. Uh, uh, thank you for covering the construction in our ward. Um, just a couple uh, updates. I had the uh, honor and privilege to represent my department in Police Week. Um, if you've never been to the Candlelight Visual or the uh, Memorial Service, it's uh, quite moving, and it's, it's something I think everybody should experience to uh, uh, honor those uh, families and officers that died. Um, next uh, 27J Capital Fees Foundation meeting will be held on June 6th. Uh, Update that actually affects Thornton is the new middle school uh, will be named officially from the school board, Talon Ridge Middle School, and that'll be operating here uh, in the coming months in Ward 3. Um, and then as, as it was already covered, Thornton Fest is this Saturday. And that's all I got. Councilmember Russell. Thank you. Um, Attending the Thornton uh, this past week, uh, I'm sorry, this past month, I was able to attend the Thornton Police Department annual memorial and award ceremony, and it was a profound experience. Um, it was a time to honor the brave men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty and to recognize exceptional service and dedication of our officers. Uh, the ceremony was a reminder of the immense commitment our police force has to ensuring the safety and well-being of our community. I'm grateful for the opportunity to express my heartfelt thanks to all officers and their family. Um, their courage, professionalism, and selflessness are truly commendable and deserve our utmost respect and appreciation. Additionally, uh, we had the summer uh, kickoff uh, party that was hosted by the police department. Uh, the summer police kickoff party was a fantastic event uh, that brought together members of the community in spirit of fun. It was wonderful to see the families, children, neighbors enjoying themselves and interacting with our police officers in a relaxed and friendly environment. Events like this are crucial for building and strengthening the relationship between our police force and the community. It highlights the importance of unity, trust, and mutual respect. I want to extend my gratitude to the Thornton Police Department for organizing such a successful, enjoyable event, and I look forward to many more opportunities to connect with our community in the future. Uh, the Thornton, uh, we had the Ward 4 community meeting as well recently. Uh, the Ward 4 community meeting was a valuable platform for open dialogue and engagement between residents and their elective representatives. Tom, we had a great conversation. Thank you for attending. <laughs> Um, it was encouraging to see so many community members participate, uh, voice their concerns, and share their ideas for the betterment of our city. These meetings are vital for ensuring that our residents, uh, ensuring that our decisions as a council are informed by the needs and aspirations of our residents. 
I'm committed to continuing this dialogue and working collaboratively to address the issues raised. So thank you to everyone who attended and contributed to the conversation. And then lastly, many of you may have seen uh, in the news or just heard around town, uh, there was a fire here in our city um, last Thursday. Uh, it was in the Orchard Farms neighborhood uh, off Highway 7 in York. Um, that's my neighborhood. The fire was about two streets over from my own. Um, it was a pretty intense scene, but the house was a complete loss for the Armijo family. Um, and sadly, they lost both of their pets, their dogs, and the fire as well. Um, no one in the family was hurt. They were not home at the time. But uh, given the spirit of our community, we've been quick to try to uplift them in this time of crisis. And I wanted to share the GoFundMe information uh, that's been set up on their behalf and ask that you donate or share whatever you can uh, just to help support them. Um, the GoFundMe, if you go to the GoFundMe website and you type in Armijo, uh, it will immediately pop up. It's the first link. The last name is spelled A-R-M-I-J-O, and it's listed as Armijo uh, Fire, uh, House Fire. So uh, I've made a social media post. I know some of the other council members have as well, uh, and I believe uh, Thornton Fire also uh, is or will be making that. But... Um, it was obviously a, an awful day for that family, but I wanted to thank our firefighters for their quick response and heroism. Uh, the scene had support from Thornton, North Metro, and Westminster Fire Departments, as well as our police patrol officers, animal control, and victim services were on the, on the scene to support too. So thank you, and uh, please look them up and donate if you can. Mayor Pro Tem Bigelow. Thank you. Council Member Russell, mentioned that we were at the Thornton Police Memorial. It really was an amazing day, and I just can't thank our police force enough for everything they do for our community. We couldn't survive without you. Um, and the community meeting, which was hosted by Ward 4, it's always really important that we get to talk to our residents. Some residents will reach out to us, but a lot of them don't. But if they see us in person, they're more likely to come up and talk with us. So I really enjoy those times where I can hear from residents, find out what's going on in the community, and see what we can help with. It's very important. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed your Memorial Day weekend. I know it was a really special weekend for me because my mom came up and visited with us, and then I had two of my three boys home, which is very special for me. Um, my husband and I did attend the Memorial Day service for the VFW Post Number 1 out at Fairmont Cemetery. Um, my husband was sworn in at that time as the senior vice chair for the Post and is serving in that role for the second year in a row, and I'm very proud of him. Um, I just hope I see everybody at Thornton Fest on Saturday, and that's all I have. Thank you. Councilmember Ayala. Thank you. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say I'll be at Thornton Fest, and I'm excited for that. But I was just looking at the um, Thornton.gov website with the backslash festivals dash events, and was just looking at a few of the other events. And I just wanted to remind folks, if you're in Ward 2 and you want to come to the um, ice cream social and you want to put it on your calendar, that's not till July 11th. So um, it's a while, a ways away, but um, just wanted to remind my Ward 2 folks about um, our ice cream social in July. And another event I wanted to name, just um, we won't be able to be there because council will be lobbying in DC and I'm super bummed because I bought a really cool t-shirt, but um, we are having our first Juneteenth celebration on um, June 13th with the band Soul School. And I was really excited about this, but being on council means now that I have other obligations to our city as well to go lobby for really amazing things for our city as well. So I won't be able to be there for that. So I hope people go and enjoy it and um, celebrate Juneteenth, something new for our city to celebrate. And I'm really excited to see pictures and I hope everybody enjoys it. So just kind of wanted to put that out there so folks remember. And then um, 
And just a couple of events here that we'll have coming up, and I wanted to remind folks of those. Um, over the last uh, few weeks, I had the opportunity to attend a couple of events. Um, the first one that I was excited to go to was the um, Police Training Center Community Open House. Um, didn't have opportunities to go to the other cool events that folks had um, going on because I had work during the day. But um, I did want to go take some time to spend some time with our um, police training center because I haven't had any, an opportunity in a little while to visit. And um, just reminded me again of how important it is for our community to become more aware of what our police force is doing in the community. And um, just see some of the ways that our um, police force is trained at the training center is just really eye-opening if you haven't had an opportunity to do that. One thing you can do if you decide to and you have the time is to um, get involved in the Citizens Police Academy and you can always talk to the police um, officers that are involved in uh, community engagement at our events if you'd like to do that. And it's more time consuming, but if you have a chance to go to an open house, it's really cool because you can see some of the ways that police officers are trained with um, kind of, I call it like a little Lego house where you can go in there and kind of rearrange it and do some scenarios, that's kind of cool. But also they have um, like different scenarios with um, screens where you can shoot. Now my favorite thing is the zombies because sometimes if they're being nice, they'll put zombies and you can shoot them. Um, and that's really fun. Or there's are like arcade game type things, but that's not really what they use it for. It's really for scenarios to teach you what it's like to be um, a police officer in those scenarios and how fast you have to react if somebody's being dangerous. And um, it's one of my favorite things to look at. But during that time, I had the opportunity to speak with um, one of our um, officers that trains all the other police officers, Matt Brooks. And he's just super smart and really cool. And one of my favorite people to talk to when it comes to all this stuff because we get really nerdy about um, case law. And I just wanted to give him a shout out because he had a, a peer-reviewed article published, which is a pretty big deal. Like if you're into nerdy kind of case law stuff, to have your article published that you wrote is, and it's peer reviewed, that's pretty cool. So um, learned about that. They also had a pony there that looked like little Sebastian. Didn't get to visit the little Sebastian pony. I kind of spaced that out, but it was a really cool event. So if you have an opportunity, be sure to um, take advantage of that because it's kind of a, a fun thing to see in our community. Um, other than that, I think I will see everybody at Thornton Fest. And um, again, if anybody has any questions, concerns, comments, or anything in Ward 2, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Councilmember Martinez. Thank you. I just wanted to start out by saying I really appreciate the comments uh, we heard today from residents about the tornado sirens. And I just want everybody to know that I've reached out to Fire Chief Kelly in hopes of learning more myself about what the city's current plans are for emergency emergency preparedness, um, not just regarding tornadoes, but for all manners of different emergencies. And I think this is an excellent opportunity, uh, you know, to identify some areas that, you know, if we hear from the fire professionals and the uh, and the first responder professionals, to learn what they think are some of the areas that need improvement and enhancement to keep our, our community safer. And so I'm looking forward to, to talking with Chief Kelly and learning firsthand um, where he thinks the council can help through the budgeting process that, that can help us, whether it's tornado sirens or enhanced uh, technology or whatever. I'm just excited to hear what, what our professionals have to say. And um, I will happily share that back with the community and um, we can discuss as a council how we want to achieve those goals of having a safer community. And then thank you again to Dr. Phillips for, for coming in and, and um, letting us know some of the issues that she's discovered. Recently, I, I'm also familiar with the issues regarding the um, businesses down on 84th Avenue. And I also would like to let everybody know that I have also reached out to uh, Chief Gordon Again, with the same mindset of learning more of what, what the police department's plans are on, on how to interact and, and address the issues of trespassing on private property and how we can uh, get services to those who need it and also to better serve our small businesses who we all, you know, the city does depend on. And we do need to, to pay special attention, make sure that our, our small businesses are being taken care of. 
So I will share back that information with the with the community as well, and let you know how uh, the police department, uh, among other parts of the city, plan on you know helping protect our small businesses. I've also attended the Memorial Dairy Ceremony at the Ollinger Highland Cemetery uh, with uh, Councilmember Unrein and Mayor Coleman, along with my eight-year-old daughter, Adelina, and I was uh, really happy to share that experience with my daughter and teach her some of the important lessons of uh, sacrifice and um, honoring our our uh, first responders and our our armed forces for the sacrifices that they've made. And I was glad to share that with them. And thank you for Ollinger Highland Cemetery for inviting us and showing and, and putting on that ceremony. Um, earlier this week or last week, I had um, uh, the uh, committee meeting with the AAA uh, for the Dr. Cog, which is the Area Agency on Aging. And I just wanted to share with everybody in here that that organization is moving forward with a project that is, is actually very innovative and it would involve partnerships with health insurance providers to provide services that would help keep older residents living independently in their homes longer. And this initiative is ongoing and in development, very innovative, and it will, when implemented, save our community millions of dollars in care costs and providing better services for our older residents. So I'm very excited about that and I'm very excited to, excited to be a part of that through Dr. Cog. I also attended the uh, NADA meeting, which is the North Area Transportation, or uh, North Area, um, yes, Transportation Alliance. And um, some updates from that meeting as the, uh, we heard some, some updates from RTD regarding how they might go about funding and ballot initiatives. Um, we also heard an excellent presentation from CDOT about the 270 project. <clears throat> the plan, if you're not aware, is to uh, widen that that um, corridor. Um, if anybody's traveled on it, which I'm sure we all have, it's it's pretty difficult to get through. So there's some various scenarios that they're considering, including adding uh, general purpose lanes, expanding it, or even the, they're also comparing that against the idea of adding express lanes in combination with general purpose lanes. This is a long-term vision, so we can you know, hope to see that within the next five years or so. Um, but we did get an update, and I want to share that all with you. And the last thing is for the Dr. Cog meeting. Uh, the Dr. Cog approved the next year's budget. Uh, we also approved the Federal Transit Administration Funding Award, which is a grants administered through Dr. Cog, where the funding ultimately comes from the federal government. I'd really love to see Thornton apply to some of those uh, opportunities in the next cycle. We also got a, a report from Fast Tracks and um, as, as you know, there's there's lots of news on that. Too much to go into right now, but uh, legislation uh, was passed that impacts that. And also the annual award celebration from Dr. Cog, which the city of Thornton has sponsored. And the last thing I'll say is um, one more time is Bike to Work Day is on June 26th. And Thornton will be having some stations where you can stop by and get some goodies if you're biking to work. So thank you to the city of Thornton for hope, for doing that. And that is my update. Thank you. Uh, so just a few updates from me. The city is currently recruiting for our vacant city manager position. Additionally, we're looking to fill other regular positions, such as a lateral firefighter, park maintenance specialist, and utility maintenance specialist. And individuals can learn more information about all of our openings on the city's website at gocot.net slash jobs. You can also follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn. The city is also currently advertising for the Thornton Active Adult Board, and the deadline to apply is June 3rd at 5 p.m. So it has been a couple of weeks since I was at a formal meeting, so I wanted to, do update, I wanted to update you on why. So I was given the incredible opportunity to join a group of nine women mayors from across the country to be a guest of the Swiss Embassy on a knowledge-sharing trip to Switzerland. And you can find all of the details on the trip on my Facebook page, but I want to give you a couple of highlights. Every day we visited a different city and met with the elected officials and the city departments to share information on transportation, economic development, urban planning, energy planning, gender equity, and cybersecurity, just to name a few. But one of the biggest highlights was I had the opportunity to meet the first female president of Switzerland, Ruth Dreyfus. Switzerland only gave women the right to vote in 1971, and they've already had a female president. 
Part of it is because they actually elect their officials as a president for a one-year term by the elected officials instead of the people. So it puts the elected officials in a position to put somebody in that role who has been working hard for the community for a very long time. So it's a very interesting way of doing business. There were some incredible things that I learned that I'm bringing back to the city to show what we can do to learn from our neighbors across the sea. There were a lot of events over the last few weeks as well. I attended the Indian American New Year celebration, the Adams County Mayors and Commissioners Youth Awards, the Lions Club Relays, which hosted the traditional Mayor's Mile. We celebrated the end of 27J's inaugural internship program completion. I participated in an ice bucket challenge to help raise money for ALS. We, a bunch of us, went to the Almost Home annual gala fundraiser. We're working to end homelessness. We attended the annual City of Thornton Business Awards. The People's Choice Award went to Anita Carniceria. The Community Spirit Award went to Rush Bowles. The Small Business Award to Melanie Boutique. The Retailer of the Year to Top Golf, And the Employer of the Year to Nano, uh, Forge Nano. The Ward 4 Community Meeting as well. And the Thornton PD Law Enforcement Torch Run benefiting Special Olympics. We had our Thornton PD Summer Kickoff Party that was mentioned already. Uh, the Adams County Regional Economic Partnership meant we talked a lot about the challenges from the latest legislative session, so I'm hoping we get some representation that will work with local governments. The Olinger Cemetery that was mentioned hosted the Memorial Day celebrations yesterday. And last but not least, our water pipeline was officially approved in Larimer County. And I want to thank all of our staff who worked tirelessly on this for years to get this project completed. And I think our next phase of construction will be starting here quickly in that area. I know it's already under construction in other areas of the, the, the community. And so we are excited to have that moving forward. And it will be focused on sustainable growth. And one last item, I do want to mention the Mayor's Ice Cream Social this Thursday at 7 o'clock featuring the Thornton Community Band. So I hope to see everybody out there. We'll move on to item 9, which is staff reports. Item 9A is the Water Utility Update Staff Report. And I'm going to turn this over to Josh Redman, Infrastructure Operations Director, to present this item. Thank you, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, Council Members. My name is Josh Redman. I'm the interim uh, infrastructure operations director. When not fulfilling this interim role, I am the <clears throat> utility operations manager that oversees the maintenance and um, the maintenance and operations of the water distribution system and our sanitary sewer collection system. Um, so thank you for providing me a few minutes tonight to give you an update on the water utility. Um, before I dive into our my slides. On behalf of the water utility, I also want to recognize Eduardo Moreno. As mentioned earlier tonight, Eduardo was was just massive in the uh, you know, project oversight, the project management, the construction of all the facilities that we use on a daily basis to ensure you know clean, safe, reliable water on behalf of the city. So, do I have control of this? Perfect. So when given the opportunity to talk about our, our water utility, I like to follow the drop of water from our watersheds to our raw water reservoirs to our you know, water uh, treatment onto our water distribution and then cover our, our CIP projects that we have going on and then the massive efforts that our, that our customers use for water conservation. <laughs> So with this, the figure on the left shows the watershed in the South Platte Basin. Um, as you can tell, we received significant snowpack um, early this spring in March, which helped boost the water supply and the water, water equivalent within this basin. Um, if you haven't noticed the South Platte River or Clear Creek today, water runoff is occurring. Um, our water resources staff is exercising our portfolio of great water rights to make sure our reservoirs are full. Um, and I do want to pass along great news that we do anticipate all of our reservoirs to be full uh, for 2024. The graphic on the right shows our storage as of May 10th. Um, we do have adequate supply. We do have roughly a little over 7,000 acre foot of um, available storage in our reservoirs. And we do fully um, plan on being able to fill all of our reservoirs this year. Annual water consumption. Here's a graph um, that represents 
basically the last 11 years of water consumption within the city. When I look at this graph, there's two points that point that stick out to me, the years 2013 and 2023. If you remember, those were very wet spring and summer months uh, where Mother Nature was helping us with our water con conservation. Um, our water consumption to date is close to 4% ahead of last year, uh, but we're trucking along and, and um, you know, things are looking well within, within um, our water resources. Moving on to water treatment, I know everyone is familiar with the hot topic as far as being PFAS. Um, as you all know, this year, the regulations for the maximum contaminant level was set. Um, we do have good news that our westbound water treatment plant is meeting that rule with when we're applying our powder activated carbon. Um, our water, our Thornton water plant meets the rule when our Stanley Lake pipeline is available. Um, we are, we have selected an engineer for pre-design for our Thornton water treatment plant. Um, the engineering estimates are coming in with a 10% federal funding requirement. We're looking at anywhere between 85 million and 100 million, which has escalated to 2026 $20, dollars. Moving forward with the water distribution um, system, I want to point out two really exciting projects that we're working on. One, the first being our advanced metering infrastructure. We are moving forward. Currently, we, we use, we deploy a meter reading car that goes out every single day to capture our meter readings. Uh, this new project will, we're, we're installing collectors and repeaters within throughout the city where rather than the meters communicating with the car, they'll be able to communicate with the collectors and repeaters and um, we'll be able to get real time water usage um, at, all of our, at all of our accounts. One part of this project that you may have noticed um, at your own residence is that we've changed out your meter pit lid from the cast iron lid to a polymer lid. And the reason for this is Although the technology is the same, the same radio frequency that's used for, for the car that we deploy every single day, that radio frequency um, is better. It has a greater distance uh, with, with the polymer lid. So the cool thing about this is we're going to have a public facing, facing dashboard. We hope to implement, implement this, this project by the fourth quarter of this year. And our residents, our customers will be able to get more or less real-time water usage, which is not only going to help them save water, but it's, uh, you know, it's just another tool in our toolbox for water conservation. Um, another project that we're working on is the lead and copper rule. In 2023, the EPA um, put out these requirements that every municipality or water service has to identify all the lead uh, service lines and or pipes that are within distribution systems. I have great news for you all tonight. We have no known lead service lines in our system. Uh, and part of how we're investigating um, this, new, this new rule is through the AMI project that I described earlier. We have physically inspected over 44,000 service lines in in the uh, meter meter pit dome location located right near front yard um, all of these locations contain copper we have like i mentioned before we have no known lead service lines in our system um, part of my role in october of 2024 i need to submit a, a service line inventory to cdphe um, but I think it's going to be a pretty easy report because, like I said, we have no known lead in our system. Moving forward, I just wanted to point out a couple uh, capital improvement, improvement projects that we're working on. Currently, we have 53 projects, a little over $100 million that we're working on. Uh, three projects in particular that I want to point out. We have begun demolition of the old Thornton water treatment plant, which is located easterly adjacent to the new Thornton water treatment plant. 
Um, with that, we are also working on a sludge line replacement from sludge line uh, replacement project from the Thornton water treatment plant to our West Brown uh, treatment plant. What this line does is for all the water that is flushed during the um, during during making water is what I call it, all that reject water, we actually send down to our West Gravel Lakes where we can reuse that water. Um, also, or lastly, I want to point out um, a new 5 million gallon storage tank that's going to be built northerly adjacent to the existing water tank that's located just east of 140th and Colorado. Um, that tank is buried at the Hilltop Park, which a lot of people don't even know that that tank exists. So that's a project that moving forward. Um, and also, the best news of the night is, like what was mentioned, the the approval of the Thornton Water Project. So here soon, we have we will have three segments under construction. And as the utility operations manager, manager, I'm very excited to be able to operate and maintain this pipeline in the future. And lastly, um, I just wanted to point out some of our water resources, uh, water conservation programs that we have going on. You know, they include multiple reject, rebate programs, um, such as water-wise landscape rebates, rebates, irrigation control rebates, rain sensor rebates, and uh, sprinkler consultation. Um, with that, I would like to invite everyone to the WaterWise Garden Open House, which is on June 15th, between 9 and 11. This event is held at the Margaret Carpenter Rec Center. And come learn how to give your landscape a WaterWise upgrade. So with that, thank you. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions from Council? Thank you. Council Member Russell? Uh, just a quick question. With the advanced meeting, uh, metering um, that allows us now to see real-time usage, do we contact residents for possible leaks when we're able to see that data now? Is that a service we do? We do. However, there's a delay. We have to wait at least a month until that, that water reading comes back. Then it gives us a red flag that there's high usage, and then we do go out and contact the customer. Um, with this new AMI system, we'll be able to analyze that day, data on a daily basis and be able to recognize high usage and contact the customer immediately. Perfect. That was, that was my question, if that Perfect. was improving that timeline. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. appreciate it. We will move on to item 10, which is the consent calendar. Is there any member of council who would like to remove an item from the consent calendar? Right. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Motion to approve the consent calendar as written. Approve and a second. Second. Thank you. Approval of the consent calendar has been moved and seconded. Clerk, please read the ordinance titles and poll the council. An ordinance amending the city council policy regarding the rules of order and procedure for city council meetings to prioritize residents and audience participation, limit the remote con comment registration period, and avoid copyright infringements, claims, and Audiovisual presentations offered by the public, an ordinance approving the annexation of approximately 4.8 acres of property situated on the northwest corner of Section 5, Township South, Range 67 West of the 6th Principal Meridian, County of Adams, State of Colorado, generally located south of East 120th Avenue and East of Holly Street at 5820 East 120th Avenue and assigning the annexed property to Ward 3, Snyder Subdivision Blocks 1 through 3 annexation, an ordinance approving a zoning amendment and with the associated overall development plan and plan development standards for approximately 5.3 .3 acres of land generally located south of East 120th Avenue and East of Holly Street at 5820 East 120th Avenue, Snyder Subdivision Blocks 1 through 3 annexation, an ordinance approving an annexation of approximately 35 acres of property situated in the northwest quarter of Section 19. Township 1 South, Range 67 West of the 6th Principal Meridian, County of Adams, State of Colorado, generally located at the northwest corner of East 140th Avenue and Dahlia Way, and assigning the annex property to wards to Ward 3, 140th and Dahlia North Hilltop Annexation, an ordinance approving a zoning amendment for approximately 35 acres of land generally located at the northwest corner of East 140th Avenue and Dahlia Way, 140th and Dahlia North Hilltop Annexation, an ordinance amending Thornton City Code Section 
38391 to remove the requirement of the city manager to declare a nuisance to be a nuisance after a notice of abatement and nuisance was already issued and section 38393 to include abandoned shopping carts as an enumerated nuisance and adding a new division 5 to 38 Chapter 38, Article 6 of the Thornton City Code concerning abandoned shopping carts. An ordinance adopting the third amendment to the 2024 budget amending Section 1 of Ordinance 3670, making appropriations for the City of Thornton, Colorado for fiscal year 2024. For all funds except that appropriations for certain individual projects shall not lapse at year end, but end in but continue until the project is completed or canceled. An ordinance vacating a portion of 152nd Avenue right-of-way east of Washington Street for a distance of approximately 1,280 feet uh, northeast. Council, please cast your votes. <coughs> Waiting for one more vote. Motion passed unanimously, Your Honor. Thank you. Item 11 is public hearings, and there are no public hearings this evening, so we'll move on to item 12, which is action items. Item 12A is a resolution repealing and reenacting council policies 1.2 and 1.4 regarding appointment and reappointment, membership, advertising, and interviewing applicants for boards, commissions, and authorities. 12B is a resolution amending the bylaws of the Building Code Advisory Board, Businesses of Thornton Advisory Commission, Election Commission, Parks and Open Space Advisory Commission, Planning Commission, and Board of Adjustment, Thornton Active Adult Board, Thornton Assistance Fund Committee, and the Rules of Procedure for the local licensing authority. Item 12C is a resolution amending resolution CD number 2023-008 to clarify the composition for the Thornton Assistance Fund Committee and add a provision to limit the appointment of any person to just one city board, commission, authority, or committee. And item 12D is an ordinance amending sections 2-81 through 2-83, 2-85, 2-86, 2-88, 10-34, 22-35, 23-35, 22-192, and 42-57 of the Thornton City Code pertaining to boards, commissions, and authorities to clarify that bylaws and rules of procedure and amendments thereto require City Council approval and to remove at-large memberships for the Thornton Active Adult Board and the local licensing authority to foster equal board representation. I'll turn this over to Joyce Hunt, Deputy City Manager, to present this item. Thank you, Mayor and members of the City Council. I see someone left this at my level so, of height. Let me put it that way. Um, tonight, there are, as the mayor uh, just read off, um, and there are four items, uh, related items that are on the agenda, and they're all related to matters uh, pertaining to policies that city council sets for their board and commissions, the bylaws for the board and commissions, and then uh, the city code that also pertains to and has items that actually specify provisions and I will, um, my presentation is actually laid out in four sections to address each one of the uh, four items that are on your agenda. Uh, so I, I first will go over the council policy changes, then the bylaw changes, and then the other related changes, which are the last two items on, on the agenda. The first uh, item I'm going to review is the council policy changes. Um, City Council has actually been uh, reviewing this and having discussions about this uh, change to their council policies uh, starting at, actually before then, but officially uh, at their February 6th planning session, at which point you reviewed the council policies 1.2 and 1.4 and directed staff to bring forth changes. Uh, the first one is uh, Council Policy 1-2, and that relates to the process that the City Council uses and membership for the appointment and reappointment uh, to the boards and commissions. Um, essentially, what is in this new policy is what was added was that the bylaws will, uh, a section that says the bylaws will define the number of members that were, will re represent each ward, uh, to provide equal representation from each ward, um, except city council, there is a provision in there that also allows city council to appoint members irrespective of this provision as, as determined appropriate. And the determined appropriate really refers to the situation where uh, we are, uh, city council is actually making a transition to having equal ward representation and um, since the uh, committee members actually serve a four-year term, they, the, the opportunity to uh, uh, adjust that uh, relationship occurs basically every two years or at such time 
as an individual uh, submits a resignation. And so it does take a little bit of time to go through that process. And so this gives city council an opportunity and some flexibility during that interim time. The second uh, important uh, point that was added to this uh, council policy was a requirement for background checks uh, to be conducted as a condition of appointment and reappointment to the Building Code Advisory Board, the Local Licensing Authority, the Planning Commission and Board of, Commis of Adjustment, and the Election Commission. Essentially, uh, these are uh, boards, the key uh, quasi-judicial boards of the city, and so it was um, uh, an important uh, uh, item to check to make sure that, uh, you know, the kind of trust that you're putting in them is not... Um, is uh, definitely valid. The uh, next item that uh, was mentioned was that there is now a provision in there that the council will limit the appointment of any person to just one board, commission, or authority. This is a new provision, uh, that, and um, so there, uh, there have, uh, historically, this was not in there, and we've had uh, numerous boards that uh, we had one uh, same member serving on, and that was a reflection of uh, what was going on at the time. Uh, the uh, next point is that the uh, appointees requesting reappointment will complete and must complete a reappointment application. So there now is a more formal process for an individual who wants to be reappointed. Uh, the city clerk will advise the members who are up for reappointment or uh, their current term is up and uh, give them 30 days notice before an application is uh, the due. And then we'll also advertise for new applications for within 30 days uh, before the application deadline. So the, the uh, city council will now be seeing uh, an uh, applications for reappointment and also hopefully applications for new uh, people seeking appointment. The city clerk will then forward all of the uh, satisfactory applications, and by satisfactory, that means that they meet the uh, ward requirements, uh, the composition and uh, qualifications that you uh, you live in the city and you're eligible to vote or you're a registered voter. And um, the, also, the city clerk will provide to the city council the attendance records of the applicants seeking reappointment um, and then seek council direction as to, um, th uh, there are three options. Uh, one, to reappoint the members applying for reappointment identified by city council to our interview the applica applicants for appointment uh, or reappointment identified by city council in accordance with policy 1.4, which is the next policy I will cover or re-advertise the position for at least another 30 days. Um, and this gives uh, city council the opportunity to try to advertise for specific wards that may need more applicants and, and, uh, have, and have more vacancies. Council policy 1.4 actually deals with the process of interviewing applicants for city boards, commissions, and authorities. Uh, what was added to the policy was that only applicants that satisfy the board commission or authority qualification and composition requirements will be interviewed and considered for appointment or reappointment. So there is a hurdle, a qualification requirement. And when the number of applicants are fewer than or the same as the available positions, the city manager will refer those applicant applications to the board, to the respective board, for them uh, to uh, interview and then make a recommendation to city council. When the number of applicants is greater than the available positions, or if the uh, board commission and authority cannot form a quorum to actually interview, the city manager will schedule those interviews for all applicants with the city council unless the city council is di directed, uh, provides direction to refer the applicants to interview with the appropriate board. So it's kind of, it's a lot of words, but essentially it gives city council a, a lot of uh, options to deal with openings on your board and commissions. The only exception is that other than the Building Code Advisory Board, the Local Licensing Authority, 
the Planning Commission slash Board of Adjustment because those are the same members. Uh, the Election Commission, those uh, will, uh, uh, under, the current, under this 1.4, would be interviewed by City Council. And the reason is that there is a really, uh, City Council places or feels that those are boards, since they are quasi-judicial for the most part, that they need to have a uh, uh, attention to provide, to make sure that their boards have, uh, have a, are fully, um, are fully uh, appointed and have the ability to, you know, make decisions at that level. And so there is an emphasis on those on those quasi judicial boards in terms of trying to make sure that the application uh, that the board board is is uh, completely um, appointed. So there, I don't know if there's any questions on those two policies, but those are the highlights of the two policies. Uh, the next section is really the bylaw changes. And so uh, back in October, uh, the city council actually approved, went through a process and approved the bylaw uh, uh, changes to what we call our administrative boards for the most part. That's the BTAC, Businesses of Thornton Advisory Commission, the Parks and Open Space Advisory Commission, the Thornton Active Adult Board, and also approved new bylaws for the Election Commission and the Thornton Assistance Fund Committee. Uh, the last two did not actually have bylaws um, enacted, and so this was the first time they had them in October. And what the key changes uh, were in the October 23 act action was there was an, an attendance uh, standardized uh, paragraph regarding attendance which said if a member is absent two consecutive meetings or more than 50% of the meetings within one year without being excused, uh, the Board of Commission may recommend the member resign or request council uh, consider the member's removal. Um, essentially, the focus was on the board and commission to essentially try to address that issue initially. And then if they felt uh, they needed to refer that up to city council, that certainly was um, uh, available to them. Uh, the other uh, key and standardized provision that was included in there was really a, a, a paragraph that is the same language that impacts and was added to city council's uh, uh, rules of procedure, and that has to do with in-person and electronic participation, and it really has to do with how uh, you participate in meetings um, that are held electronically. The, the, uh, essentially, the policy says they, the, the preference is to have in-person meetings, but if extenuating circumstances don't permit that, then the members may participate virtually by electronic or telephonic means on an infrequent or occasional basis. And that, what that meant for city council was four meetings. For the boards and commissions, what that means is it standardized it to, except for the planning commission and the board of adjustment, which is four meetings. For the most part, all of the, the boards and commissions meet on a monthly basis. Uh, the building code advisory meets a lot less frequently uh, because their, their role is a bit different, as does the election commission. So those meetings will tend to be clumped and they don't meet uh, um, annually or on a regular basis, they meet when they have some business activity that they have to attend to. So there is standardization in, in that language as well. Um, the next key change was uh, there was a provision that um, and was included that said that all of the boards and commission members are subject to the code of ethics and the code of conduct for boards, commission, and authorities that city council uh, approved last fall. Um, and then a new uh, provision was added in the bylaws for uh, the building uh, the, for BTAC, which is uh, Businesses of Thornton Advisory Commission for Parks and Open Space Advisory Commission and Thornton Active Adult Board. And that was to establish uh, working groups. And it, it is uh, an informal process that allows the, each of the committees to uh, set up basically a subcommittee to investigate issues that are, are of interest to that board. 
without having uh, it considered to be a formal meeting so that it, the meeting has to be noticed and you have to follow the same procedures as you would for any meeting, but it is really considered in, an informal meeting and um, doesn't have to be recorded. Staff doesn't really have to be there, but the chair or uh, of those subcommittees has to give a report back to the regular committee as to what their actions were, and they cannot take any action in, in and of themselves, but they can report and make recommendations back to the committee as a whole. And so that was um, a change that was enacted actually at the request of, of uh, uh, Thornton Active Adult Board was the one that originally raised it, but it was of, a, of value to both the other two, two boards as well. So the next change that, um, uh, we, that we received direction from City Council, and I'm referring to up here as the May 2024 key changes, was really uh, the, the key provision was the inclusion in the bylaws that delineates equal ward representation uh, for each uh, board or commission with the exception that was added in there that the City Council may appoint uh, gives you kind of an out if they if you're trying to to seek an equal representation but it's not going to occur over the next you know immediate time and you still need to appoint uh, members to the board so um, there there is that was considered the 2024 key changes so um, essentially there were uh, I have listed gone through and listed, in each one of the boards and commissions, what the key changes were. Um, I'm not sure uh, whether you want me to go over all of them. One of the things I would add is that the Building Code Advisory Board bylaws were not changed in October because they were uh, considered in, uh, uh, they, they act um, separately and not they're not really an administrative board because they can conduct public care uh, 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 referrals of, and so that one, uh, the Building Code Advisory actually got the May changes and also the October. So they are now up to speed with everybody else. Uh, VTAC, the big change that we made, they have all of the October changes and they have the May 2024 amendments. What we did do in the VTAC bylaws, and because it was not there before, there was a uh, city council had a policy, Council Policy 1.3, that actually set out the qualifications, the member qualifications for the businesses of Thornton um, Advisory Commission. And it, essentially, <laughs> it's nine to 15 members, but there are like eight or nine categories trying to get representation uh, across the, the geographically and the sizes and the types of businesses. And so you need a flow chart, an uh, Excel spreadsheet to keep track of them, make sure you're filling the right slots. So instead of that having be, be, be in a separate council policy, with that is now included in the bylaws. So you don't have to look two different places. You will see what the requirements for the membership are, is in the Businesses of Thornton Advisory Commission bylaws. The election commission, uh, again, that uh, they had the, the new, uh, they were included in the October changes and the May 2024 changes really just addresses the uh, membership requirement. The, the election commission is one of the boards that you have, uh, it can be, you know, between uh, five and seven people. So saying it's equal is a little hard. But uh, when, if the, for the most part, most of the city council's board and commissions are, uh, are nine people. Um, some get up to 15, TASHCO is 12. And so if you have an odd number, the odd number uh, um, can be from any, appointment can be from any ward. So that you don't have, that's the out when you have, then try to divide by, to get an equal number. The Planning Commission and the Board of Adjustment had the October um, uh, uh, provisions in there, and then in May, again, they were adding it. It's just a little bit clearer language um, that uh, what the composition should be. You have to have two from each ward, not more than three. That's pretty standard language. Uh, and then the exception is that if you can't fill that, you can 
city council can uh, take action at your discretion. Local licensing authority um, a, was uh, the may they only had the May amendments. They this is their first time. They actually have not uh, had their their bylaws amended since 2015. So this was a pretty um, uh, good time to kind of update all of their 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 provisions. Uh, parks and open space, uh, they have the October amendments, they have the May 2024 amendments, and, and as I said before, they're one that has the uh, subcommittee provision as well. Thornton Active Adult Bylaws, uh, they're in the same boat. They have the October 23 amendments, and then they have the May uh, 2024 amendments regard regarding ward uh, representation. They are a little bit different than than some of the other boards in that they have uh, membership. Uh, the, the mayor has a, a recommended, a, can recommend an appointee to that board as well as the 55 plus club. So there are uh, two positions there uh, that are, uh, that come in besides uh, the equal ward representation. So again, you have, you can have kind of one or two floating um, in a ward. And then the last one on here is the Thornton Financial Assistance Committee bylaws. Uh, the, uh, the bylaws were amended in October and again in May. Um, that they were, the May amendment is again for, to reflect the um, equal ward representation. Again, the uh, Thornton Assistance Fund Committee and is a little bit di different than some of the other committees in that the wards uh, Ward has a rec recommend an appointee, as does the mayor, uh, but this just adds some more clarifying language as was requested. And let's see, oh, those are the other related uh, changes I'll go over. So there, there's really two groups of amendments uh, that are, that, and they were done closer, close together, so <laughs> trying to explain it all. So lastly, hopefully I'll get to these two, uh, there is a resolution in your uh, packet that deals with the Thornton Assistance Fund Committee. When this uh, fund was, uh, this committee was established by City Council, the resolution, it was established by resolution and historically had been a committee that uh, served for only one year. And then a couple of years ago, the City Council changed that resolution to a two-year appointment. But that resolution establishes um, the, the ground rules and the expectations, uh, similar to what the rest of the boards and commission committees do, uh, but those are in code. And so that's why there are two things. The resolution for the Thornton Assistance Fund Committee adds a couple of provisions, makes it really clear that, uh, that uh, as, the, as to the number of appointees, uh, uh, the number of members on the TAF, and how they were appointed, it adds, the, which they are always had some flexibility in the language, you know, to have, have the more than the equal number represented. And then it also added the language that is in the city council policy, because again, this is, this is a board that was commit, uh, created by resolution and not in city code to allow uh, the city council so that, the, so that it's clear that part of the, the, this, new, this creature of the TAF committee it includes language that says that the city council will, will limit the appointment of any person to just one city board so that all of the boards and commissions, committees, authorities that you appoint are, uh, have all of the same provisions. Um, the last item that is on your agenda is, is, an, ador is an ordinance, and for those uh, boards, committees, and authorities, the Liquor Licensing Authority, uh, that are created in code, this removes some language that is now in their bylaws and doesn't uh, need to be in there, and it and makes it really clear who, uh, that the City Council approves the bylaws and they're the rules of procedure for the local, license, local licensing authority. Um, and in the in Thornton Active Adult Board, uh, it also removed the at-large members. So the way the code typically 
talked about uh, membership is that there could be at-large members. And so this removes all that language because all of that uh, is now in the bylaws. And so I, I, um, I will get to the punchline, which is the recommendation. And the recommendation is to approve the, uh, the resolution that um, amends council policies 1.2 and 1.4. It approves the bylaw amendments for each one of the boards and commissions and a resolution that uh, changes and updates the Thornton Assistance, Assistance Fund Committee resolution that establishes their procedures in charge. And then lastly, the ordinance that makes uh, pr certain provisions to the code and, and makes it all, cons all of this consistent. So with that, um, I will stop talking. <laughs> Are there any questions from council? I think your presentation was extremely thorough, Joyce. <laughs> Sorry it was so long. <laughs> Councilmember Martinez, would you please introduce item 12A? Absolutely. I'd make a motion to for a resolution repealing and reenacting re council policies 1.2 and 1.4 regarding appointment and reappointment membership advertising and interviewing applicants for boards, commissions, and authorities, and I move for its approval. Is there a second? Second. Approval of the resolution has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Council yeah, Martinez, uh, you had the option to go first. As you sure, make a motion. sure. Uh, I'll just say that I think that all of these changes are, are meant to, and I think they will enhance the you know, experience of the boards and commissions that we have, and we really rely on our residents to, to volunteer and, and participate and, and really give it their best to um, you know, help make the city a better place for everybody. And you know, I really, I'm, I'm glad that we are enacting these rules if it passes that, that we'll hopefully have better participation and more engagement from our community that will ultimately lead to better outcomes for our residents. Thank you, any further discussion? I'll just say ditto. Please follow the council. Council, please cast your votes. Motion passed unanimously, Your Honor. Thank you. Councilmember Martinez, would you please introduce item 12B? Okay, I'd like to introduce a resolution amending the bylaws of the Building Code Advisory Board, Business of Thornton Advisory Commission, Election Commission, Parks and Open Space Advisory Commission, Planning Commission, Commission and Board of Adjustment, Thornton Active Adult Board, Thornton Assistance Fund Committee, and the rules of procedures for the local licensing authority. And I move for its approval. Second. Thank you. Approval of the resolution has been moved and seconded. Is there any additional discussion? Councilman Martinez, you want to go first? Sure. Yeah, I'll just say that, again, these, these new rules are going to, I think, ultimately help our, our boards and commissions do a great job. And I look forward to having further discussion with our our council on how we can, you know, make these boards a better and more welcoming environment for everybody. And, and yeah, this this will be ongoing. So and we might not have to change the bylaws every single time, but I think there's always little adjustments we can make to, to make the experience better for everybody. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Please call the council. Council, please cast your votes. Motion passed unanimously, Your Honor. Thank you. Councilmember Russell, would you please introduce item 12C? Yes, thank you. I'd like to introduce a resolution amending resolution CD number 2023-008 to clarify the composition for the Thornton Assistance Fund Committee and add a provision to limit the appointment of any person to just one city board, commission, authority, or committee. And move for its approval. Second. Second. Thank you. Approval of the resolution has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councilman Rusty, you have the option to go first if you have anything to add. Um, understanding that this is just more along the lines of the rules and, and how we're addressing the formation and representation of these. But um, with the Thornton Assistance Fund, we appreciate the work that you do and your dedication to the city. I think it's a very important committee. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Please call the council. Council, please cast your votes. Motion passed unanimously, Your Honor. Thank you. Councilmember Russell, would you please introduce item 12D? Yes, uh, I'd like to introduce an ordinance amending sections 2 through 81 
2-81 through 2-83, 2-85, 2-86, 2-88, 2-89, 2-90, 2-91, 2-92, 2-93, 2-94, 2-95, 2-96, 2-97, 2-98, 2-99, 2-100, 2-101, 2-102, 2-103, 2-104, 2-105, 2-106, 2-107, 2-108, 2-109, 2-110, 2-111, 2-112, 2-113, 2-114, 2-115, 2-116, 2-117, 2-118, 2-119, 2-120, 2-121, 2-122, 2-123, 2-124, 2-125, 2-126, 2-127, 2-128, 2-129, 2-130, 2-131, 2-132, 2-133, 2-134, 2-135, 2-136, 2-137, 2-138, 2-139, 2-140, 2-141, 2-142, 2-143, 2-144, 2-145, 2-146, 2-147, 2-148, 2-149, 2-150, 2-151, 2-152, 2-153, 2-154, 2-155, 2-156, 2-157, 2-158, 2-159, 2-160, 2-170, 2-171, 2-172, 2-173, 2-174, 2-175, 2-176, 2-177, 2-178, 2-179, 2-180, 2-191, 2-192, 2-193, 2-194, 2-195, 2-196, 2-197, 2-198, 2-199, 2-200, 2-201, 2-202, 2-203, 2-204, 2-205, 2-206, 2-207, 2-208, 2-209, 2-210, 2-211, 2-212, 2-213, 2-214, 2-215, 2-216, 2-217, 2-218, 2-219, 2-220, 2-221, 2-222, 2-223, 2-224, 2-225, 2-226, 2-227, 2-228, 2-229, 2-230, 2-231, 2-232, 2-233, 2-234, 2-235, 2-236, 2-237, 2-238, 2-239, 2-240, 2-241, 2-242, 2-243, 2-244, 2-245, 2-246, 2-247, 2-248, 2-249, 2-250, 2-251, 2-252, 2-253, 2-254, 2-255, 2-256, 2-257, 2-258, 2-259, 2-260, 2-271, 2-272, 2-273, 2-274, 2-275, 2-276, 2-277, 2-278, 2-279, 2-280, 2-289, 2-290, 2-291, 2-292, 2-293, 2-294, 2-295, 2-296, 2-297, 2-298, 2-299, 2-300, 2-301, 2-302, 2-303, 2-304, 2-305, 2-306, 2-307, 2-308, 2-309, 2-310, 2-311, 2-312, 2-313, 2-314, 2-315, 2-316, 2-317, 2-318, 2-319, 2-320, 2-321, 2-322, 2-323, 2-324, 2-325, 2-326, 2-327, 2-328, 2-329, 2-330, 2-331, 2-332, 2-333, 2-334, 2-335, 2-336, 2-337, 2-338, 2-339, 2-440, 2-451, 2-452, 2-453, 2-454, 2-455, 2-456, 2-457, 2-458, 2-459, 2-460, 2-471, 2-472, 2-473, 2-474, 2-475, 2-476, 2-477, 2-478, 2-479, 2-480, 2-491, 2-492, 2-493, 2-494, 2-500, 2-501, 2-502, 2-503, 2-504, 2-505, 2-506, 2-507, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-598, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516, 2-517, 2-518, 2-519, 2-520, 2-521, 2-522, 2-523, 2-524, 2-525, 2-526, 2-527, 2-528, 2-529, 2-530, 2-531, 2-532, 2-533, 2-534, 2-535, 2-536, 2-537, 2-538, 2-539, 2-540, 2-541, 2-542, 2-543, 2-544, 2-545, 2-546, 2-547, 2-548, 2-549, 2-550, 2-551, 2-552, 2-553, 2-554, 2-555, 2-566, 2-577, 2-578, 2-579, 2-580, 2-581, 2-582, 2-583, 2-584, 2-585, 2-596, 2-597, 2-508, 2-509, 2-510, 2-511, 2-512, 2-513, 2-514, 2-515, 2-516,
there's a requirement for in-person that's the same language relating to the in-person electronic participation in meetings. And there's also a provision for subcommittees, uh, which is very, very similar to the working group provisions that are in the other uh, boards and commissions. There's a slight difference in TASHCO. Uh, so there are changes to, in, in the bylaws, there's part of the changes Part of the bylaws uh, relate to the, the members of the corporation, which is city council, and the majority of the bylaws relate to the board of directors, which are your appointees. Um, Article 4 uh, uh, deals with uh, city council, and so we needed to add a provision in there regarding the in-person and electronic participation that um, that the you as the members follow and actually have been following. Um, and there's also a article six, there were some changes to the board of directors, which are the folks that are appointed by you to oversee the operations of TASHCO. It uh, corrects the maximum number of the, on the board. Uh, for some reason, they thought they could, there was 13 there a uh, while back. Um, I don't think they looked at the articles when that was changed. It was a while back. Um, so we needed to change it back to 12 because the articles of incorporation only allowed 12. Um, it adds language for the board of directors that they will, again, have equal ward representation, um, except that the city council may also uh, appoint members irrespective of this provision as it determines appropriate um, and that was probably more apparent in the TASHCO, because TASHCO was uh, about the time that they uh, uh, TASHCO board of directors was making recommendations to uh, appoint some folks was the time that city council was uh, considering all of this, and so they made some appointments that um, uh, that that would technically have violated the equal board representation. So. That's one of the reasons that there is that provision in, in the, uh, uh, that allows the city council to have a little bit of discretion as this is rolled out. It also adds the attendance language. Um, the, if you don't attend two consecutive board of director meetings or more than 50% of the meetings within one year period without being excused, the board may recommend that the, the member resign or request the city council to consider removal and replacement. And then lastly on here, on this article, it adds a code of ethics uh, that they have to comply with the same code of ethics that the city council applies to all the employees and their appointees, the other boards and commission members. And then as well as the board commission and committee code of conduct that it also applies to the TASHCO board of directors. There's also a change in Article 7, meetings of the Board of Directors, that adds the in-person and electronic participation. Again, it's the same requirement that was required of the City Council who was acting. So it, it gets a little confusing, but there's really two separate, um, two levels that you have to deal with in the bylaws. And so this level deals with the Board of Directors who are the ones uh, overseeing the kind of the day-to-day. -day. Um, and essentially, this, this um, you, you cannot uh, participate electronically in more than two meetings, uh, dates within one calendar year. And that um, get, uh, actually created a problem for the Article 10 subcommittees that TESCO has. Uh, the Board of Directors um, is allowed to uh, create subcommittees. And, uh, but as a subcommittee, they have all of the requirements of a, of a full meeting, which means they have to notice it. You have to, have to have, there's usually staff there. You have to, you know, do, keep minutes and report back. And so, uh, but the key provision that was a problem for the subcommittees of TASHCO, it has to do with the electronic participation because most, most of the subcommittee meetings are held electronically. Um, uh, by Zoom or some other mechanism like that. And so it was a real concern to most of the members that they that it would really impact the ability to create and utilize subcommittees. 
And uh, so what, what we did was really just expanded the subcommittee to look like and have similar provisions that we have for subcommittees of the other boards and committees, which essentially you have to provide notice that you're gonna have to meet, have a meeting, and you have to make that available for the public to participate or to, to know about it and go, go to the meeting, but you don't have to keep minutes. Staff doesn't necessarily have to be there unless they're presenting or whatever. And they, the subcommittee cannot make uh, decisions on behalf of the board. They do that. They are then re, uh, will relay the information of their subcommittee meetings back to the boards, which they do now. It's it's on their agendas, um, at their regularly scheduled meetings. But and and there, um, and so it, it it allows them to really not be subject to this only being able to do a uh, uh, in-person meeting and not being able to do most of their their meetings uh, electronically and so that that was a key provision in the in the bylaw changes for tashco and I think that is uh, staff recommends uh, approving these changes to the bylaws any questions from the members all right, hearing none, Member Ayala, would you please introduce item 5A? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm presenting a resolution approving a fourth amendment to the bylaws of the Thornton Arts Sciences and Humanities Council of the City of Thornton, whereas, this, whereas the Thornton Arts... And you don't have to rate it in its entirety. Oh, I don't. Oh, Just good. the title. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Do you move um, for its approval? So I move for its immediate approval. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Approval of the resolution has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Member Ayala, you have the option to go first as you made the motion. Yeah, um, I just want to thank staff for preparing this. I know that it's um, a lot more work with the 501c3 and the separate board. And so just appreciate the work because it is important that we have consistency um, as much as possible across the boards, but it's also important to recognize that some of the boards do function differently for different reasons. And so um, as much consistency as possible is greatly appreciated while also recognizing the differences and um, the differences of the work that the Arts um, and Humanities Board does for our city. So thank you. Any other discussion? I'll just say thank you as well. Please pull the members. Members, please cast your votes. Motion passed. Unanimously, Your Honor. Thank you. Item six is adjournment, and I would entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Thank you. Clerk, please poll the members. Members, please cast your votes. Motion passed unanimously, Your Honor. Thank you. We are adjourned at 8.41 p.m. <laughs>